Well, hello there everyone. Um, so I found myself in this funny position because earlier today, today being May 31st, 2022, I was watching this video by um, Henry VIII. Actually, her, her name is just Henry VIII. Um, eighth spelled out in Roman numerals and she's someone I'm subscribed to who um, talks about uh, Harry and Meghan Harry Prince Harry and Meghan Markle um, and sort of royal news and and assesses what has been done um, by the family and to to Meghan to Harry and to each other. It's a good channel. I'm not selling it very well, but I, I like it. And she's very, she, she, she does what I'm trying to do, but about something completely different and, um, way better, way, way better production value, editing skills, everything is just top notch. So if you're critical of, uh, the BRF and you, um, don't love a witch hunt then you you might like her channel but that's not what this is about this is actually about just that I was coincidentally watching this um, her like latest videos and in the one called boo William she says this you know when you make a video on a topic then the day after something happens that would have been really great to include in that video <sighs> Yeah, that's what we're going to talk about today. Which was funny because then later on, I'm on Twitter um, just a few minutes ago and I see this tweet that is like, it would have been perfect to put in my video that I uploaded yesterday, recorded earlier than yesterday, um, about gender reveals and Michael Henry's reaction, or sorry, gender reveal parties and Michael... Henry's, uh, not reaction, more like critique of them, and yeah, I just thought that was funny, and I wanted to talk about this tweet a little bit, it's just like so perfect in a bad way, because this is what I'm talking about, and this is something I've seen a lot of, I've gotten into a lot of debates online with trans identifying people who are like this, and usually they're a little bit more, um, subtle, I guess, with it, but, uh, yeah, this is a very popular and common belief, and, I mean, look at those likes, like, it's not a fringy, I, I don't think it's that, like, it's not that fringe of a belief to discuss, I don't think it's fringe at all, I think this is the core of trans ideology and people who identify as trans, this is their core belief, even if they don't say it, but, discussing it or admitting it openly is you don't do that because it just sounds too bad and it is bad um but I've definitely had many arguments and I've seen other screenshots and I've seen others um like in my timeline screenshot uh trans identified people and their allies saying stuff like this and I'll just read it out if you're like just listening and not um looking at your screen um, this is from someone called Hot Girl Trademark TM, not trademark spelled out, but TM. I want to study why TERFs aren't ever attractive slash pretty if they're obsessed with defining femininity via sexual dimorphism. Like, wouldn't it make sense to get your eyebrows done and stop doing winged liner with a pencil from the bottom shelf of, at CVS? Or maybe use hair product. That's the tweet. And um, it has 280 likes. Or it did when I took this uh, screenshot. And it's uh, it was posted May 29th. Um, at I guess relative to my time. 10.22 uh, a.m. So yeah. This. Uh, this is sexism. And let me. Let me full. Uh, context this person is responding to someone I follow um, 
who is called, I guess, Miss Magdalene Burns Forever Radley, which, like, hell yeah, R.I.P. Magdalene Burns, um, yeah, then Magdalene's, uh, this Magdalene fan said, trans women are largely white heterosexual males, they are employed in high paying roles like tech and media, they are just as statistically likely as any other male to commit male pattern violence, including sexual crime. They are not underdogs. 100% true. And notice this person did not contend with the argument at all. They just went to uh, ad hominem. You know, this is not a critique of what uh, Miss Magdalene Burns Forever said to, to say turfs are ugly. <laughs> that's not a critique that's like that's all you've got because you can't you can't uh come with anything factual or anything even reasonable because it's not the, the it's not exactly clear although i mean some observations of like the the percentages of trans identified males in prison who um have committed a sex crime it actually suggests they're they have a higher propensity than the average man to commit sex crimes. So, like, the evidence is not conclusive, I'll, I'll say that much. But there's certainly no evidence to suggest that trans-identified males are less prone to male pattern violence or sex crimes. Nothing at all. And again, quite the opposite, actually. Um, and it fits that it would be there, that there are a lot of AGPs in that community, like I know that there are a lot of people who are just heartsick about being male and they hate it and they are they are decent and they just want peace and they think that's how they'll find it, but there are also quite a few AGPs and creeps in their midst and even, you know, people are complex, so even someone who is genuinely heartsick about being a male and hates it and has like the deepest dysphoria can also be a predator and a creep like you can be both so yeah this is what I was talking about in my last video this sexism that is inherent to trans ideology I don't think this person is a rarity or a weirdo I think this is the norm this I mean our eyes tell us our you know our ears they do and they don't tell us because what trans identified people are saying is no, it's about a feeling. It's nothing to do with stereotypes. I would have lying to you. <laughs> while looking like stereotypes 99.99% .99 of the time. And the problem, because I know they'll come back with, oh, well, cis people look like stereotypes most of the time. Yes, but cis people are what they say they are. Cis people, you know, it, they're not making a commentary with their, you know, clothing choices you are a male or a female person and then you look a certain way you're attracted to a certain look and um, behaviors and expression styles and then you say you're this other label you, you label yourself the opposite sex or neither sex that's the commentary, like just existing and adhering to your gender's social expectations and stereotypes is not the same thing as a trans identified person who who goes out of their way to call themselves something other than what they are, other than what the they are defined as by the dictionary, by uh, a word exists for you already, right? You're a male adult, so the word for that is man, very simple, but you don't like looking like a stereotypical man, you don't like behaving like a stereotypical man, you don't connect with stereotypical men, you don't feel comfortable around stereotypical men, and because of this, you then, then you decide, it's always, a, there's always a coming out to this, even in childhood, so you then decide that you're not a man, even though you literally are a man. And that is the problem. That is the difference. Because the implication here is a leaning in 
to sexism, a, a intense leaning in. Again, I've said the most extreme leaning in to sexism, where you unsex yourself uh, metaphorically, and then you also try to make us all recognize it legally as well. That's no good. No, it's a problem. It's it's not true. It's not real. It's sexist. It's backwards. It's all the things I keep saying it is that other gender critical people say it is, observe it is, notice it is, point out it is. It's bad. It's bad to be sexist. It's bad to push sexism like hot girl TM is pushing. This is backwards. This is everything we were trying to escape as a people, as women, as men who are allied. This is the stuff that is oppressive in a society, these gender roles. And this is what trans ideology pushes. It is bad. It's like, you are doing harm. You are doing something bad. You are doing something hideous, quite frankly. You are telling children that their bodies are wrong. Whose instinct is this? How does every intelligent person not just instinctively know that a kid thinking their healthy body is wrong is bad and that we should be doing the opposite of what trans ideology tells us. I saw this tweet the other day and I wish I'd screenshot it. It said something like, who knew telling kids to accept themselves and love themselves in 2022 would be considered a hate crime? And it's so true, that's not an exaggeration, that's essentially what that is when you encounter a trans-identifying child, you know, trying to coax them to accept their bodies, to love themselves, that is considered a hate crime by the trans community. That's considered, what is it? That's considered conversion therapy. Insane. Teaching someone to cope with their feelings of dysphoria and love their body is conversion therapy. They just steal words and ideas that don't fit, that don't apply, that make no sense to use. And that's the only way they can make their argument is the, these extreme terms to vilify. Because like how, how, who wants to be the person who's doing something that's called conversion therapy anymore? That it's it's like bad, bad, they're bad, we're bad for doing that. Look at this evil thing we're doing, telling kids to love. So you can't say, look at this evil thing they're doing, telling kids to love themselves and accept their bodies. So you have to call it something that we know is bad, something that is a bad word, conversion therapy. So manipulative. <sighs> okay. So I also wanted to highlight this good response to this blatant, ugly sexism, um, and it's from a user I follow called Renavoid, and she, well presumably she um, wrote, being good at makeup is the only way to be attractive as a woman. I'd rather define a woman, not femininity, because those are not the same things in reference to biology than whether someone can do a cut crease or not because that is insanely misogynistic. She's 100% right, of course. <sighs> Facts, as they say. And um, the response from the original poster to that was, woman transcends misogyny by defining femininity by breeding characteristics. So stupid. Just so stupid these people okay so many of these people are so just dumb just what so i think this person hot girl is meaning to critique renovoid by saying that she the the woman in this you know that mocking thing people do like reinterpreting your words um sometimes correctly sometimes incorrectly but they're always trying to make a point about what you're saying and how absurd it is, and I think that's what this was doing here, where this person, hot girl, is saying about Renovoid that she is trying to transcend misogyny by 
defining femininity by breeding characteristics and it's just so dumb like no you idiot biology is just what connects that type of human that's why they have a name that's why men and women have names they share this thing this distinct universal thing in the world that bonds them that makes them the same and they need a word for their category everything has a name we are a speaking species we give everything a name that's how you can talk about things and people is giving them a name category so female humans need one including female which they're trying to debate and take away too but female humans male humans they need to be able to describe themselves like i don't need to tell you this because you know that's what trans identified people are wanting they want names to def to describe themselves so you know the importance of names and categories and descriptions that's not the issue you're just being dishonest and are very stupid because this is not a good argument like what you didn't again you didn't address what she said so like you use this manipulative kind of language to make it sound worse than it is by saying breeding characteristics but can you explain why that's bad hot girl can you explain why it's bad to give people who share certain breeding characteristics a name what's your logical opposition to that why is that bad it's just so frustrating these people are so dishonest and manipulative and stupid all of it they're all of those things and it's harmful and that's the bad part that's why it's so infuriating people sharing breeding characteristics is significant that's not nothing that's the reason they've been treated the way they've been treated why one has been exalted while one has been controlled these are two distinct types of humans like what are you what are you arguing what is the argument yes they we share breeding characteristics why is it bad to name that why is it bad to name humans who share that and what is the alternative so woman is the word for what then who is that for? Who 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 does woman describe? Because you so cuz you can't run away from it now. You just said it's about what being pretty. That's what that's that's what women should be. So biological females, they don't need a name. And for some of you that includes female, they don't need that name either. But but what I you see I can't even what needs a name what is woman for who is woman supposed to describe it's again the wink wink nudge nudge you know and this one's not wink wink nudging anything this one is this hot girl person is very blatantly just yeah I'm not even gonna pretend it's it's about being pretty that's what woman is about that <sighs> this is such a stupid timeline. I can't believe it. It's shocking every time to be confronted with this type of thinking. It's crazy. It's crazy that the intellectuals are not more critical of it, not loudly critical of it, and that some of them, a lot of them, the loudest of them are, and the most popular of them, it seems, um, are even co-signing it and passionately and not calling this out or the flaws in it out or questioning anything it's truly depressing but yeah i think i'm done so thank you for listening thank you for watching um like comment subscribe etc as they say and yeah i will see you in the next video bye